Good morning. This is Get Up live in New York City with enormous breaking news this morning. The New England Patriots and Bill Belichick are parting ways after 24 seasons. Our reporting this morning coming from Adam Schefter and Mike Reese. Belichick leaves New England with six Super Bowl championships. He is 15 wins shy of breaking Don Shula's NFL record of 347 wins as a head coach. Welcome to Get Up, and here is our squad, and the entire show we had planned went up in smoke about 40 minutes ago with this news. So we will get you to the word about Nick Saban yesterday and Pete Carroll yesterday and all the other things. And by the way, six NFL playoff games this weekend, but clearly within the last hour, the extraordinary news, perhaps not a surprise, but still jarring when you hear it. Bill Belichick is no longer to be the head coach of the New England Patriots. I mentioned that Adam Schefter and Mike Reese have the reporting for us this morning, and they are both standing by with us. Shefty, let me start with you. I'm just giving you the floor here. This was your story about 40 minutes ago. What can you tell us about this decision in New England, Belichick and the Patriots? Greeny, it's a new era in New England, and Bill Belichick and Robert Kraft spent much of this week in meetings, and I think it was in a way to figure out the best way for each side to move forward. And in the end, the Patriots decided to move forward without seeking compensation in return for Bill Belichick, who still has one year remaining on his contract. They did, as one person described to me, they took the high road here, and they're letting Bill Belichick go find another job if that's what he wants to do, and that is the intention and the expectation that he will be interested in one of the other jobs, and there currently are seven other openings aside from the one in New England right now. The Patriots will embark upon their first head coaching search in a quarter century. Think about that for a moment. They haven't been through any of the madness that we've seen your Jets or the Browns or the Jaguars go through in recent seasons. The Bill Belichick now will get to figure out where he would like to go. And obviously, everybody will have their say about Bill Belichick's place in history, which is extraordinarily high. And it continues a chaotic coaching week that started yesterday when we saw Keith Carroll and the Seattle Seahawks essentially and their coaching relationship with Pete Carroll moving on from that franchise. We saw Nick Saban retire from Alabama yesterday. And it isn't amazing now that Bill Belichick has retired within hours of his close friend, or at least stepped aside from his close friend, Nick Saban. Nick Saban took Alabama to nine SEC title games, won six national championships. Bill Belichick took the Patriots to nine Super Bowls won six Super Bowls. There's similarities there. And so we now have more coaching movement. We have a change in New England. It's crazy to think how much has happened here. There are the other notable coaching stories that all have unfolded within the last 24 hours. Legends of the game exiting stage left. And they say that things usually come in threes. Well, there's three for you right there, Greeny. Belichick, Saban, and Pete Carroll. Yeah, three legends. Carroll, once upon a time, was actually the coach of the Patriots. He drafted a fellow by the name of Damian Woody, who was sitting here. A couple of things I'd like to mention for the audience here. We are going to be commercial-free for the next 25 minutes, so stay with us with all the coverage and all the analysis and all the insight of what happened here in New England. Also, that there will be a news conference at noon Eastern today in New England, and we will carry that live for you here on ESPN. So, Shefty, take me inside these conversations. You say it was multiple meetings. Do we know, because Belichick is always very difficult, but maybe holds it closer to the vest than anyone in history, do we know if it was his preference to stay? What what do we know uh, as far as what the Crafts wanted, what Belichick wanted before they ultimately arrived at this parting of the ways? What was interesting was, again, you see these situations unfold across the league, Greeny, right? Sunday night, the Falcons fire Arthur Blank hours after the regular season ends. Monday morning, the Commanders fire Ron Rivera. But Robert Kraft and Bill Belichick have been together for 24 years. There is a lot in that relationship that has lasted for so long. It's not a simple situation where Robert Kraft walks in and says to Bill Belichick, I don't want you to be my coach. Bill Belichick has certain things that he wants to express to Robert Kraft. They want to discuss what went wrong 
in previous years. They want to figure out if there's a way to make it right. And the conversations went on throughout the day on Monday. Bill Belichick was not in the office on Tuesday. The conversations resumed on Wednesday. And both men, I was told, these were productive, healthy, non-contentious conversations that ultimately ended with both sides agreeing that this was the best thing and what I think each side wanted to do. I think New England was ready to start a new chapter here with a new head coach. And I think Bill Belichick was ready to leave New England and walk away and start a new life and build a new chapter somewhere else. And I know Teddy will talk about this as well, but he also has family considerations. He has three children in the area, two sons who work for the Patriots organization, Stephen and Brian. And so I'm sure he's figuring out what is best for me, what is best for my family. And I think he believed at this time it was right to move on and go forward and go to a new place. And the Patriots now, they start a new search, a new chapter. Right now, 25% of the National Football League's teams do not have a head coach in place. Eight out of the 32 who are in place. And we still have the playoffs to come, so there could be a few more changes. Okay, you see the squad here. Everyone has so much to say. Again, we're going to go commercial-free for a while, so put your feet up. There's a lot to be said. Let's start with the man on the right of your television screen. Good morning, Teddy Bruschi. Um, I, I don't know that he quantifies them exactly this way, but if Bill coached the Patriots for 24 years and you put, if you gave him truth serum, I think he would say that was his favorite player that he ever had over all of those years. So, Teddy, go ahead. Your, your emotion, the, the world wants to hear your thoughts this morning on the end of one of the truly great eras, if not the greatest, in the history of the National Football League. Yeah, I guess um, Bill Belichick taught me too well. I'm really unemotional about the entire thing because um, I really thought that this was, this was coming eventually. I mean, Bill's been there for 24 years. Good players end up saying goodbye. Great coaches end up saying goodbye. A lot of players have come in and out of that organization. A lot of coaches have come in and out of that organization. But this one right here, it is a historic moment that, that this era ends and that Bill is possibly moving on to coach somewhere else. So um, what I say to that is it'll never be matched. It'll never be the same. There, will no, there, will be, there won't be another coach that has the amount of sex success that he has had. Um, two coordinators, being a coordinator for two Super Bowls with the Giants, and then coming here, six Super Bowls. I was there when he was an assistant coach in 96 after he got fired from Cleveland, and he was a defensive backs coach for that time when we went to the Super Bowl under Parcells. Uh, Pete Carroll comes in, and then Bill comes back. We go 5-11, and 11, then, of course, the run then starts. The man knew how to win. The man knew how to get the most out of all of his players. He knew what buttons to push. He knew how to irritate you to the point where you were playing almost at times in spite of him, and that worked a lot. Um, he just knew how to win football games, strategize. Um, this, this type of coach, I think, is just not coming any. It, it won't be in the NFL anymore with the with, with so-called relationships that, to ha that have to happen with quarterbacks and players and how uh, a lot of players are now coming into the league much differently than they were in the past. And so coaches will be different. Organizations will be different. I think an organization like the New England Patriots that we had will never be matched. And the championship winning will never be matched either. This is the best coach that ever lived. Six Super Bowl championships, nine Super Bowl appearances, 13 championship game appearances that Belichick and Brady had together. These are all numbers that not only have <laughs> never been approached, but to your point, most likely never will be, Teddy. I mean, they, they, they boggle the mind, yes? Yeah, and here's the thing. When you win that much and you say those numbers and you say the championships, Thoughts go through my mind, and thoughts go through Bill my, Bill's mind, and thoughts go through all the players' mind that have won so much there that it should have been more. Hmm. All right, there are AFC championship hmm. games we should have won. There are Super Bowls that should have been won. And you, you, you say the six, you say, you say my three, whatever it was, and it's like, damn, it should have been five. Damn, <laughs> it should have been 15. Damn, it should have been nine. And that's what, that's what the Belichick breeding always did. It did. It was never enough. The winning was never enough until you stop and have time to reflect. And that's the thing during this press conference. I hope to see from Bill just a little bit. 
just that finally for once in his life that he will reflect on the good that he did there because it was always about the next step or the next off season or the next championship to the win, to win or the next game. I hope he can reflect and sort of take in just all of the appreciation that everyone that are Patriots fans there in New England have for him at this moment. Yeah, I, I, that's really well said. And I, I can see D. Wood nodding along. And again, we're commercial free here with you, so we have plenty of time to keep diving into this. I have a lot more for Teddy. But D. Wood, I'll start with you. What, what I, D, Damian Woody played for, for Bill early in your career as well. And what I particularly noticed was when Teddy said he could sometimes aggravate you to the – I saw you start to nod vigorously <laughs> along yeah. with that. T tell me about Bill Belichick. <laughs> Yeah, listen, I remember those those meetings and Teddy can talk about them like like those, you know, those Wednesday morning Wednesday team meetings where Bill would just man, it didn't matter if you're Brady, didn't matter if you're Teddy Bruschi, didn't matter if you're Lloyd Malloy and myself, you can go on down the list. Like he would literally tear you apart. Like literally, it was the, those meetings were some of the most uncomfortable meetings in the world, but it was like that's the state he wanted you in. He constantly wanted you to be uncomfortable because if you're not, if you're uncomfortable, that's to your highest potential to grow as a player and as a person. And so yeah. <laughs> for all of those years, Bill kept that building in a state of uncomfortable, you know, just being uncomfortable. And it's no surprise why that organization has been the most successful organization over the past 20 plus years. And that's why it will never be duplicated again because the man at the, at the head of it all kept everybody in that building in an uncomfortable position. I want to get everybody in here. And again, we'll have more time uh, as the morning goes on. Teddy, I promise I'm coming back to you, but let me get everyone in. Uh, Dan, obviously, I mean, you've been in the league, around the league. Orlovsky, first, I'll start with you. Just, yeah. I mean, this news today, we, we came in this morning expecting to talk about Nick Saban. I know you have pages of yeah. notes. And, and, and there is, I think, a real symmetry to this. I mean, they were together. Saban was his defensive coordinator in Cleveland. We'll have Lewis Riddick later this morning. He played on that team, so he played for both of them. And then, boom, we get Bill Belichick here. What are your thoughts? Uh, Never be duplicated again. It's the greatest run in the history of the NFL. And hearing Teddy and Wood talk, the, the interesting thing when you guys talk about the style of coaching is there have been so many coaches that have tried to replicate that style and fail. And for some reason, Bill Belichick was able to do it and succeed. He inherited an organization that had never accomplished really anything and turned it into the greatest organization of, in the history of the NFL. He will go down as the greatest coach and he will go down as the greatest winner the NFL has ever seen in that spot. Let me get Harry, you played against his teams, obviously. I mean, how would you describe those defenses and what it was like to go up against him and them in particular? Well, when you're preparing for a Bill Belichick defense, you're going to see a 4-3 defense. You're going to see a 3-4. So there are multiple fronts you always had to, you know, prepare for. And as a guy who played in the slot, you know, when the front changes, who you're hot off of now may change as well, Dio. You understand that. Sure. So there are a lot of conversations that you have to have on the side with your quarterback, in which for me it was Matt Ryan about, hey, if you get this 3-4, then now you're hot off this guy. If you get a 4-3, you're going to be hot off this secondary guy now. So a lot of those conversations. But when I think about Bill Belichick and what you touched on this, number one is the accountability. Being able to coach 1 through 53 the same way and when you're able to coach Tom Brady a certain way, it allows other people to understand, okay, Bill Belichick wants us to basically be one band, one sound. We need to be in sure. unison when it comes to everything that we do. And then how you mentioned, Dio, detail-oriented Bill Belichick always was. And I was, my last game in the National Football League was with the Tennessee Titans, and we played the New England Patriots. Well, I can't get this out of my mind. It was a fourth and five situation, and New England was about to punt. We decide to jump off sides. Game over right there. Yeah. You, you couldn't make mistakes against Bill Belichick. He was going to always make you pay. And then the discipline he always instilled in his players and his coaching staff. That was a legendary game where Vrabel manipulated the clock exactly right. the way we would have expected Belichick to do. Danny, let me come to you here. As obviously, you were working the phone feverishly, as Shefty and others are. Eight openings, Eight openings in the NFL right now when the Patriots become one of them and Belichick becomes a fascinating candidate for at least some of them. Yeah, I think that the one team we continue to hear over and over again is the Atlanta Falcons as a, as a place where that might be a fit. Um, there's a couple things to, to think about here. 
15 wins shy of breaking Don Shula's all-time record mm -hmm. for wins by a head coach. Yes. So he's going to be looking, you know, he's, he's, he's going to be 72 years old. He's going to be looking for a place where he can get those wins uh, in the next couple of years. I, I think that's important, too. And so you look at, here are the openings, right? Atlanta's got a, probably a pretty good roster. Need to figure out quarterback. Uh, the Chargers have the quarterback, but maybe some other uh, roster concerns. Uh, the Seahawks opening just, just happened. I, I doubt that he's a fit there, but uh, I think that's going to be an enticing opening for a lot of people. Uh, so... So his next stop, you know, again, a lot of people speculating Atlanta, but we'll see uh, where that shakes out. I think in terms of who replaces him, the three names that, that Shefty mentioned, Brian Flores, Mike Vrabel, Gerard Mayo, in some order, I think those are the ones uh, to watch. And then, you know, I, 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 I want to point out that he and Robert Kraft are doing a joint press conference today. Yeah. And I, I don't think that should be overlooked because I think there's a sentiment up there of like, people watched the Jimmy Johnson, Jerry Jones thing a couple of weeks ago, and we don't want it to be 30 years before, like, the hard feelings are smoothed over. Right. Yeah. I think we've talked for a week or so now about how is this going to work out, how is this going to be presented, when and if it does happen. The fact that they're able to do it in a professional and amicable way, I think, is a benefit to both of them and to everybody around this situation for a long time to come. Again, you will see that news conference live here on ESPN. Shefty, jump back in. Yeah, a few things there, and I think Dan raises a great point about the fact that it is a joint press conference this afternoon between both sides, which tells you that this process, as it was explained to me, was peaceful. It was non-contentious, and that's what you want in the end for a tandem, an owner and a head coach that will go down and be a part of NFL history. And again, we talked about where each side goes from here. And the crafts now, I want you to think about this. They now embark on their first head coaching search in a quarter of a century. When they last mm -hmm. traded for Bill Belichick, there was no Rooney rule in place. Mm -hmm. They haven't mm -hmm. gone through a head coaching search in the modern day. They don't realize or know that the NFL changed the rules this season so that you cannot meet face-to-face -face with a candidate under contract until after the divisional playoff round. There are a whole different set of dynamics that surround the hiring of a new head coach. And by the way, I think some of those rules made it hard for them to trade Belichick. Look at the history of success in this league of the last three head coaches in New England. Their last three coaches have been Bill Belichick, Pete Carroll, Bill Parcells. That's a pretty good track record for Robert Kraft. They're going to try to duplicate it. I know that we brought up those three names. Dan brought up those three names of Brian Flores and Mike Vrabel and Gerard Mayo. I think the list starts with Gerard Mayo. We start there and then go yeah. on from there. Mm -hmm. And we talked about Bill, Je Bill Belichick becoming a coaching free agent. And Atlanta is the first one that comes up. Now, we'll see if the Falcons are interested, but I will right. tell you this. If we think of Arthur Blank in his later years, desperately wanting to win while he can, and we look at his history in the past, there aren't many owners that have swung harder at big-name head coaches than Arthur Blank. He once mm. tried but didn't get mm. to hire Joe Gibbs. He once tried to hire and get Bill Parcells. And now the Falcons have a vacancy while the Bill Belichick is a coaching free agent. We know that he knows him. Remember the 28-3 game in the <laughs> Super Bowl that we're watching the highlights of, right? I mean, it's all Remember. right there. It makes so much sense that it's hard to imagine that Arthur Blank wouldn't have some level of interest in Bill Belichick. Now, I'm not telling you that that will be their choice. They're sending out other slips, and they may find that some young, energetic coach is the best leader for the Atlanta Falcons. But Arthur Blank's history is that he swung for big-name coaches and hasn't always gotten them, but he swung big. He wants to win now. He knows what Bill Belichick has done. So to me, there's a lot of signs to point to that while the Crafts are embarking into new territory and Bill Belichick is a coaching free agent, I mean, it's just a lot here to unpack, Rini, and sit through throughout the course of today. So the coaching carousel, as Shefty and Dan Graziano and all of us know, is always fascinating.